All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Affiliation Draft Reveal Show. Uh, my name is Evan. I'm your host. Got a couple of guests on that we'll bring on in just a few moments as well. Uh, but basically, for those of you that don't know, the Affiliation Draft uh, is a draft where pro teams selected uh, players to play in the minor leagues, uh, but be the first in line to be called up if they lose anyone on their pro roster. Uh, so, we're not going to go through this like a typical draft because the draft is done all behind the scenes. So, we're not going pick by pick with the full uh, reveal and the clock countdown and speculation and stuff like that like we did last weekend. Uh, so, we're going to go through each team's selections uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about them. And then at the end, we're going to reveal what teams each minor league goalie is going to be playing for. And then... Uh, after that, we will reveal all the players that either joined too late or were undrafted in the affiliation draft and what minor league teams they will be on uh, come this regular season. I'm too low for you guys to see. I think I'm cranked all the way up here. Some you can hear me, some you can't. It's, you're not sure what that's about, but I'll try to talk a little bit louder for those of you that can't hear me. Um, so, uh, like I said, uh, we're just going to go through the affiliation draft. We'll talk about the rules a little bit, and then we'll go through uh, each of the minor league team rosters and the pro team selection. Scream louder, bro says. All right, so the affiliation draft rules. Uh, there are f five rounds. Of the affiliation draft uh, picks could be traded however all teams had to end the draft with the same number of affiliates at five that could be either four, uh, four forwards and one defenseman or three forwards and two goalies <clears throat> yeah i do barely have a voice but i'm working through it uh players selected will be playing for the minor league affiliate for their pro team uh, so that's why the affiliation draft dictates the minor league rosters um Affiliates will, like I mentioned, will be first in line to be called up if their pro team loses somebody. Uh, if a team runs out of affiliates, then uh, they can start calling up from the rest of the minor league pool of unaffiliated players. Uh, and then all affiliates are going to be receiving one season contracts. And pro teams will have a small pool of incentives to give to their affiliates uh, as a little signing bonus um, to help them get off on the right foot. And after the season ends, uh, yeah, the volume is up on the mic stream app, cranked all the way. I think my voice is just going. Um, but uh, after the season, any affiliates that are not called up uh, will be allowed to either enter the entry draft next season, uh, sign a pro, uh, pro contract for the team that they're affiliated with, or... Um, sign an affiliate contract which again would be a one season deal uh, for any team in uh, the pros all right so um let's see who do we have on here as guests i think we've got mikey adams here uh did you want to talk a little bit about the strategy um around the affiliation draft and what you kind of thought of the rules and, and how melbourne approached it yeah i can hear you <laughs> It's loud enough for me, at least. Yeah. Step up if we needed them. Uh, given that they're one season contracts and they have a lot of freedom at the end of this contract, I wasn't too concerned about looking long term. Um, there was at least one pick we made that was largely um, in relation to players that are already on our team, buddies of theirs that uh, I want to try and get in and at least give them an opportunity to be exposed to the to the clubhouse and you know have somebody to bounce some ideas off of, kind of build up that uh, that equity with the, the with the rookies. But largely, it was just a matter of trying to forecast where we might have needs over the course of the season and who we can bring in that would fit in a depth role to to replace those guys if we needed to. 
Yeah, for sure. And, you know, obviously that's a, a big thing to look at is who you might be losing. Um, you know, teams who have six active defensemen that they trust might have gone the 4 forward 1D route uh, compared to teams that maybe have some defensemen they're not as sure about or, or whatever. Um, it also depends on how the... Uh, on how the draft fell, obviously, and what teams were forced to do, but, uh, yeah. Man, people are complaining, all, they're saying, you're talking too loud, I'm talking too quiet, now I'm gone, apparently. Yeah, well. I don't know what's going on with the audio here, but, um, probably just my voice going. Um, alright, so, we're gonna get started here. My voice is one-tenth of my piece, well, at least it's on there. Uh, so we're going to go alphabetically by the uh, minor league teams by location. Uh, so we're going to start with the Atlantic Bucks, and that means that we're going to be talking uh, with uh, talking about the Albuquerque Faroes selections and the San Diego Reapers selections first. So, uh, like I said, each team ended up with five players. So the Pharaohs ended up with Alexander Kruger, Mar Miroslav Parlamov, Michael Beresi, Virginia Emmett, and Jay Adagirl. So there's three uh, players that played a decent amount of time in the minors last season, and then two uh, that are a little bit newer. Um, next up was the San Diego Reapers. They got Danny DeVito, Will Smith, Hans Haudruff, Dan Norris, and Lars Anderson. Again, three players in DeVito, Haudruff, and Norris who played uh, a decent amount in the minors uh, and a couple of new, uh, newer players there. Uh, they did draft Chris Rock in the entry draft, so I think the selection of uh, Will Smith is uh, a little bit tied to that. Uh, I think Matt had enjoyed that uh, connection there. Um... Our next guest we have here is Eric Newton. Uh, did you want to maybe hop on here and see if there's any names that jump off the page here uh, from either of these two teams' selections? Um, and obviously, as an expansion team yourself, what you think the Reapers uh, did with their picks? Um, they did pretty well. Um, there was a few names that I'm very not familiar with. Um, I know Dan Norris was on our board for a little, for a while, so it was Lars Anderson, but they just happened to get him before we did. Yeah, for sure. Dan Norris was one I was starting to look at a, at that range of the draft as well over in Turku. And um, yeah, you know, somebody who's been in the minors a little bit, uh, nice defensive presence there. Um, yeah, I think that both these teams got a, a good mix of some potential uh, with the new blood and, um, and some of the uh, players who've been progressing a little bit. Uh, I know Parlamov had a lot of reaction in the draft chat. Um, I think that was a nice pickup uh, when Albuquerque got Parlamov there. That was a great selection. A lot of people were annoyed with that one, so that's always a good sign. Uh, we're going to move on. We're going to talk about the Iceland Ice next, uh, moving from Indianapolis to Iceland. Um, <laughs> we've got the Jacksonville Vipers. I'll see if I can get the uh, guest a uh, little quieter and me a little louder here as well for you guys in the chat. Uh, we got the Jacksonville Vipers and the Tennessee Black Bears affiliated with the Iceland Ice. So starting off with the Jacksonville Vipers, they took defenseman Johnson Grayson, forwards Mika Strainessi, Aiden Letterman, and Javad Storm, and defenseman Jason Mackay. Uh, Mackay is a player that, uh, or a user, I guess, that I know through uh, Fantasy League or two, so I think that's a nice active pickup there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Strynessi, Letterman, Grayson, they all played in the minors last season. Javad Storm played a little bit for the Alberta Prospects uh, towards the end of the season. And for the Tennessee Black Bears, they took John Bond, Trey Martin, Brent Skoma, Jimmy Derringer, and Jonah Burke. So uh, not a whole lot of experienced uh, players here. Trey Martin played a little bit with the Alberta Prospects as well. Um, and... Uh, Brent Skoma uh, was in the league at the start of the season, I believe, um, but came back after the season and kind of restarted their player. So, uh, yeah, so that's kind of two different directions. You see the Vipers going very experienced, the Black Bears uh, taking, uh, I guess, maybe activity-based or user-based. Uh, Mikey, did you want to hop on here and maybe talk about your thoughts, uh, any names that jump off to you and, and what you think these two teams did? 
Yeah, so the uh, given how close the two drafts were, I didn't get a chance to really speak too much to some of the newer uh, additions to the league. Uh, the names that jump off the board here were guys that I considered in the regular draft and then heavily considered it in the um, in the affiliate draft were Micah and uh, Letterman. Uh, Letterman especially, I spoke with him earlier in the game, uh, earlier in the season, sorry, and he had a ton of questions that we, we went back and forth on. He worked real hard to try and make up some progressions, uh, and I think he's going to be a really good at if they need to call him up. Uh, I wanted to grab him, but we felt that center was one of the spots that we didn't really need a guy uh, and trying to focus on a certain type of build elsewhere. So I think that's an absolute steal for Jacksonville for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I agree. Letterman, very active. Uh, like, Yeah, good conversations had there for sure from us. Um, Mika Stranessi, you mentioned as well, was uh, a player we were looking at specifically as well. Uh, I think actually taken right before we were going to pick uh pick them and yeah so that was kind of a little bit frustrating from our perspective and uh but you know great conversations there and uh some great selections uh by both these clubs all right we're gonna move on here uh on to the next team the malmo royals uh so this is a new uh minor league team uh now that we're growing from six to eight so this team will be affiliated with the Glasgow Black Watch and the Turku Finns. <clears throat> so from the Glasgow, Glasgow Black Watch, uh, they selected Alice Black, Brian Lickett, Garth Algar, Judah Dorgan, and Josh Allen. And from the Turku Finns selections, Mitchell O'Brien, Miroslav Zakova, Jakob Dvorak, Marco Zajac, and Dimitro Alakine. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Glasgow uh, took, a, I think, three newish, newish players. Uh, a couple of them might have joined before the draft, but uh, at least three of them didn't play in the minors last season. Uh, Judah Dorgan did come in late uh, in the season and played for the Wales a little bit. Algar was on the championship winning Bucks. Um, over on the Finns, uh, we didn't select too many experienced ones either. Zajac was a late addition to the Tigers. Dvorak from the uh, Farmers and of course Zakova from the Tigers as well. Uh, but the other two uh, were a little newer. Um, I think O'Brien might have played a game for the prospects but uh, that's about it as far as experience game-wise in this league. Um, I don't know if uh, I saw Newton said he was going to step out for a sec so uh, I don't know if he's back or not but Mikey did you want to hop on and maybe give your thoughts on these two teams as well? Yeah, not a ton of thoughts on this. Again, with the uh, the close proximity of the two drafts and then some of these guys being pretty much brand new right before the draft, uh, there's some names I don't even recognize, I'm ashamed to say. Um, a couple guys like Al Gore and Dorgan were in the main draft and were considerations. There were issues with either activity level or missed progressions at some point. Um, I think they're going to be solid if they're going to stick around. I think that's an awesome depth um, with some experience there. Uh, the two names that really jump out to me, though, is Alice Black and Brian Lickett. They were both uh, relatively newer guys, but were extremely active in the chats. Um, I think both being defensemen definitely help as well. That's a position that's always in need. Uh, but the activity level, even for new guys, were, uh, were what stood out to me. Yeah, for sure. And that's really what you see a lot of times in, in these leagues. Even in the entry draft, we saw a lot of uh, players who are just you know more active getting picked uh, ahead of guys like you know Algar who have been around for a little bit longer because um, somebody comes in they've got friends or they're just a little more active in chats and kind of jump off the, the page a little bit sooner uh, we took Mitchell O'Brien a new player uh, a little earlier than some of the experienced players um, that's another one like you mentioned uh, at the start during the rules uh, like Mikey mentioned um, that you kind of some picks were based on connections to players. And um, I know before the initial draft, uh, one of our defensemen, Aaron Kozak, actually reached out to me and, and said to keep an eye on Mitchell O'Brien, uh, even though he was a little newer. So um, I think they're good friends. So uh, we wanted to bring him in the clubhouse there as well. So, All right. Uh, we're going to move on to the next one. Moving along pretty quickly here, but... Uh... There we go, the Manitoba Snowhawks moving over from Moscow. Uh, their affiliates, the Alaska Arctic Wolves and the Cleveland Hounds. The 
Alaska Arctic Wolves selected defenseman Michael Crawford, forwards Parker Minion, Sebastian Laframboise, and Velociraptor Greg, as well as defenseman Sports Stats. That name might sound familiar, uh, or probably does. Obviously, he was a goaltender in the minors and a uh, uh, backup goaltender for all the pro teams last season, uh, but he retired his player at the end of the season and uh, a little while later decided to create himself, uh, recreate a player as a defenseman. Uh, and the Cleveland Hounds selected Jake Prudom, Heinz Haudruff, Reza Locke, Garrett Hart, and Thomas Ferguson. So again, seeing a bit of a mix here, uh, the Arctic Wolves selected two players who played games in the minors this season in Crawford and Laframboise. Um, the Hounds selected uh, three players, actually, Prudom, Haudruff, and Locke, who all played games for the minor league season. Um, yeah, I mean, Velociraptor Greg is pretty active. Parker Minion's been active in the chat. I think that's a nice haul for the Arctic Wolves. Uh, Crawford's a player that um, has been pretty active throughout the season and a, a real physical presence, so I was a bit surprised to see him not taken in the main draft. Um, yeah, on the Cleveland Hounds side, Jake Prudhomme uh, had himself a great season, actually produced relatively well defensively for a defensive defenseman. Um, Howdruff, he, uh, he was always a threat to score. Reza Locke came in a little late, so it's a little tough to get a read on, but, uh, I think played really well for the, uh, for the Farmers. Of, no, no, I think actually the Snowhawks last season as well. So, um, Newton, I don't know if you're back. Did you want to give your thoughts on these two teams? I don't think, uh, I don't think he's back, so we'll give, uh, We'll give Mikey a break and we'll move on to the next team here, the Saskatoon Farmers. So starting with the Norfolk Navigators, we've got defensemen Dreams Nelson and Sensei Juju. Forwards Aaron Eichenberg, Damian Chambers, and Joe King. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, those two defensemen, Nelson and Juju, played uh, games for the... Uh, in the minors last season, Nelson was with the Farmers, I believe. Juju was with the Ice. Eichenberg's been pretty active so far. Uh, Chambers is a little newer. Joe King also on the newer side. I think might have played a bit for the Alberta Prospects towards the end of the season, though. On the Redwater Undertaker side, we've got Stefan Forge, Cade Sweeten, Billy Hawk, Ronnie Shanahan, and Xavier Lingham. Um, so... Not a whole lot of minor league experience there. In fact, I don't think any on the Undertaker's side played in the minor leagues last season. Billy Hawk might have played for the prospects uh, a little bit. Lingham might have played a game or two as well in there. But, uh, yeah, some real nice uh, picks here. Um, I really like the uh, Nelson and Juju and Eichenberg picks, actually. I think Norfolk did a really nice job with the, uh, with the draft. And I think uh, Redwater... Um, you know, they picked some real nice active uh, activity type people. So um, some interesting selections here. Uh, Mikey, did you want to hop on again and uh, kind of give your thoughts here? Yeah, I mean, my, I second pretty much everything you said. Uh, the guys that stood out on Norfolk, Nelson, Juju, Eichenberg, for sure. Uh, some activity, some experience, and some decent builds already off the hop for those guys. Uh, the name that definitely stood out was Shanahan on the Undertakers. I think if you had given it another week between these drafts, he would have been a lot higher on my list. I've noticed a lot more over the last week once things have kind of settled down from the original draft that he's been very active. And he's got a personality that stood out in the chat as somebody that could probably come in and be a good influence in a, in a draft room as well, or sorry, in a team room as well. I mean, all in all, I don't recognize a lot of the other guys on the Undertakers team as far as activity goes. Um, but again, it's it's been a busy couple of weeks. Yeah, for sure. It's it's kind of tough when so many new people are joining as well. So, um, yeah, it's kind of tough to keep up with it, uh, especially um, as a team owner. I can kind of speak to the almost the burnout you get after the entry draft and kind of you spend so much time preparing for it, building your list, and then it kind of ends and, you know, you start to forget to, to keep that list updated with the affiliation draft coming up. Um, so... Moving on to the Tokyo Tigers here. Uh, so their two affiliates are the same ones they had last season. Um, so we're going to start with the Florence Firebirds. They got Ryan Jones, Decky Peterson, Shawn Michaels, Merrick Etera, 
and Fletcher Reed. Ryan Jones played games for Tokyo last season. Uh, was always a scoring threat. Decky Peterson came in, I want to say around week eight or so, and joined the Snowhawks. Uh, I don't believe the other three played any games in the minors last season, um, but they've all shown some uh, some level of activity so far. So um, some good picks there for Florence. On the Vegas side, we've got Billy Silly, Twinkle Toes McGee, Neat O, James Smith, and Vincent Constantino. Uh, so I know Doug had a, a big recruiting push um, to help us get to our affiliate threshold, um, which, by the way, if you don't know, we weren't going to have affiliates unless we got enough uh, for a minimum of four per team. Um, otherwise, we were just going to run full minors with full waivers kind of thing. Uh, we wanted to test the system with a little bit more than what we had last time. So, um, so with his recruiting push, I think he brought in a decent amount of new peoples, which is why I think you'll see the Vegas – uh, selections are not as experienced in the minors. Twinkle Toes McGee did play for the ice. Uh, Billy Silly might have played for the prospects team. I can't remember. Uh, but the, the other three haven't played in the minors yet. Uh, so we'll get to see them on the ice um, for the first time for some of them uh, when Tokyo hits the ice next week. Um, Newton, now that you're back, did you want to hop on, give your thoughts on these two draft classes and your, uh, um, I guess, any memes that jump off at you? Um, I'm really surprised that the uh, Lawrence Firebirds went a lot with their picks on the right wing. Um, that that kind of stands out to me. I don't know if they just don't trust the right wings they have now or if they just want to really um, solidify that right wing position in the majors. Um, centers seem to be a well-rounded uh, picks for the most part. Um, with the two centers and the two left defense. Um, but I'm kind of more curious about where the Florence Firebirds were on their uh, affiliated draft. Yeah, for sure. And, um, yeah, like the, the right wing thing, um, yeah, it could be that they are, you know, maybe they have an inactive right winger or something like that. But it could also just be, um, you know, like just how the draft fell, just the guys they like. Uh, for me personally, when I'm drafting – I look at forward versus defenseman. I don't really care so much what side they're supposed or what side they selected. Um, usually, I'll talk to them if I plan to play them out of position. Um, but for the most part, you know the uh, you don't get penalized for playing a forward on the other side. So um, definitely, uh, definitely interesting to note that you know Tokyo is going to start the season with four right wingers and no left wing. Well, no left wingers through the affiliation draft. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely an interesting uh, thing to point out for sure. All right, so we, I think we've got two more teams to go through. Um, one of them is the Vancouver Whales. So we've got the Florida Challengers up first. They selected Johnny McSlaps, Blake McTavish, Sam Azia, Dan Glissak, and Marco Arna Arnautovic. Uh, so Dan Glissak was, uh, played for the Farmers last season. Uh, McSlaps played a little bit for, I think, the Whales, actually. Uh, the other three, I don't believe, played in the minors last season at all. Just going off of memory for all these, so if I uh, forget anyone, I do apologize. Um, as for the Melbourne Marauders draft class, they got Dit Clapper Jr., Adam Gibson, Davon Tequavion, Jack Brown, and Luca Hawk. Uh, so I know Clapper Jr., Gibson, and Tequavion definitely played in the minors last season. Jack Brown, I think, got in there for maybe a week. Uh, but Luca Hawk has not played in the minors yet. Um, Mikey, if you want to hop on here and talk about uh, your class in the Marauders and then maybe what you think about uh, your old club and what they were able to do in Florida. Yeah, I got to say that teaming up to have a, a shared affiliate with Florida is pretty awesome. Um coming from where I've been and where I'm coming to. So I think that's a good group of 10 guys right there that are going to li line up for those teams. Um, looking at my team, again, we kind of had to forecast where we might have needs and our, our focus was more on the forward side of things um, between me and my wife on D and then um, three very veteran, either, well, I shouldn't say veteran, one really active veteran and two very, very active rookies or near rookies in uh, Shaboy Sean's case. Uh, we just didn't foresee us having a huge need on D. Uh, Adam Gibson is close friends with uh, one of our guys, Steve Vare. Uh, so I definitely wanted to bring him in, like I said earlier in the show, 
uh, give him a chance to kind of get exposed to our clubhouse, give him somebody to reach out to and hopefully try and help him along with his progression. Uh, as an offensive defenseman, he almost could be the heir apparent to Mikey Adams potentially. So when that time comes, it's uh, potentially somebody in the in the um, prospect pool to, to step into that role. Uh, Takavion and Clapper are guys that we see that could step in right away if we have a need at forward. Again, right wing, left wing, it doesn't really matter so much, but anywhere along the forward lines. I really like Jack Brown when he came in. Uh, was really high on him, and uh, even though he was relatively new, I think he would have been a great fit. Didn't get a great chance to reach out to him, but I'm looking forward to doing so now. And then Luca, I didn't know, but we were getting short on picks and players available, and uh, I look forward to reaching out to him and seeing how how that fit kind of goes. Uh, truth be told, Florida sniped us on Glissack. We were really looking forward to trying to add him, and he went a couple picks before we went. Uh, he was going to be our second D pick. And then uh, Sam Aja and Blake McTavish were both also on our lift at various points in the draft as well. So I think it's a, it's a good group of guys for sure. Vancouver's going to be a, a competitor next year. Yeah, for sure. And they've got an active coach over there. Triple H is coaching this team. So um, I think they're going to uh, be a force in the minors. Just need to get some uh, centers uh, for them. Hopefully some of these wingers are playmakers. I think a few of them are. So might be able to play yeah. uh, some of them at center. But all right. So we've yeah, got I... more... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that Glissack was definitely the steal of the draft, of the affiliate draft anyways. Yeah. Do Trevor uh... proud. Yeah, I was uh, a little surprised he went as late as he did. Um, I know he did opt out of the uh, the main draft, um, and I think if he didn't, he might have been selected in that too. So uh, I just know he's active in other sim leagues and stuff, so I was a little surprised to see him fall as far as he did. Um, all right, so one more team to talk about here uh, before we get on to the goaltenders and the rest of the assignments, and that is another new team, the Warsaw Warlocks. Um, so... Their affiliates are the Boston War Unicorns, who selected D. Hardy, Vlad Kuznetsov, Adonis Richter, Andrew Payne, and Brandon Cuevas. Uh, so Kuznetsov and I believe Hardy played in the minors last season. Uh, or Kuznetsov, I think, actually just played for the uh, Alberta Prospects. I don't think got into the minors uh, by the time the season had ended. Um, the Dublin Dragons had five first-round picks after an, a series of trades. And selected Tyler Grimms, Whitney Bissonette, Taylor Jean Reeves, Barry McCockner, and Jasper Mikkonen. Uh, so, Newton, did you want to hop on here? And uh, this is another situation where an affiliate is being shared by an expansion team and their old team. I think there's uh, three of those, if I'm not mistaken, um, out of out of the four expansion teams. So. Uh, did you want to maybe talk about your class over in Boston and then uh, what you thought of what Dublin did uh, with their picks? Um, as a... So, yeah, I can only really, I can speak from, um, for just the Boston War of uh, For our picks, uh, I had a great talk with D. Hardy, a good friend of mine. Uh, recently joined the league. He wants to play for Unicorns. Um, however, we do have a very um, long list of defense currently. So I wanted to make sure he was at least affiliate, um, especially with our new uh, coach, well, head coach for the Boston Warrior Unicorns. I wanted to give him like a taste of the draft. So I let him do the picks also. Um, as for the Dublin Dragons, um, I, as some people know, I came over from the Dublin Dragons. So I, I'm very aware of how they do things over there. Um, just looking at our list between the two, I think uh, the Warlocks have a really good chance, especially having four centers right off the bat um, and the dragons having uh, the first few picks uh, right off, the, right out of the gate. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy how both the dragons helped out not only themselves, but also the warlocks too. And that uh, the unicorns were able to help them also. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, like you mentioned that not, I said, the dragons had five first round picks. I should have mentioned four of those were uh, the first four picks of the draft after a bunch of trades that uh, they pulled to, to move up there. So anytime you're picking that early, uh, this minor league team should be a force. And you can look at that Dragon side. They've got three players who played a decent amount of time in the minors last season, um, as well as two extremely active uh, newcomers. And then obviously on the, on the Boston side, lots of activity already from some of those players. Uh, so yeah, some nice, uh, some nice picks for the Warsaw. Warlocks. 
Um, all right. So moving on, uh, we do have the uh, goaltenders. We did a minor league. Uh, we let the minor league coaches draft the goaltenders actually because there were eight goalies. Uh, goaltenders were not eligible to be affiliate picks. Um, so there was no way other than randomness to decide who they played for. So we figured we'd let the coaches have a bit of fun and draft their own goaltenders. Uh, the graphic is off because the names are about to be filled in. My apologies. There it is. The Atlantic Bucks uh, selected Tony Puckstopper. This is not in order of the draft, by the way, just in order of team name. The Iceland Ice selected James Martin. Malmo Royals got Ben Bishop. Manitoba Snowhawks selected Pat Callen. The Saskatoon Farmers got Panda Riva. Tokyo Tigers got Boris Avlachenko. And the Vancouver Whales selected Arnold Schotzenstopper. And the Warsaw Warlocks got Ian Shore. Um, so, uh, yeah, some, some real active goaltenders there. Obviously, Tony Puckstopper came off a minor league championship. And the Bucks managed to get him back. Uh, so that's going to be a huge... Um, a huge addition to their team. Ben Bishop uh, is obviously one of the higher rated goalies in the minors as well. The other six are newcomers, but uh, all seem, or most of them seem pretty active so far. Uh, Mikey, did you want to maybe hop on here as a team who needed a goaltender? Uh, and, uh, and we're actually the last one to take a goaltender. Uh, ben Bishop and Tony Puckstopper specifically, I guess, would have been names you might have looked at a little bit. Yeah, way to put me on a spot here with <laughs> deciding on which player to take. Yeah, you know, 100% JT Waters and 20 puck stoppers were the 3-4 um, um, in our pool. And then when Drury came back and took one of those spots, uh, I knew one of them was going to end up falling out. Kind of gave us the chance to, like, I'm super confident in any of those two goalies in coming in. So it was a matter of just kind of who fit our locker room best. Uh, and as the process went along, unfortunately, Waters, well, Fortunately and unfortunately. Fortunate for the player, fortunate for the team. Um, but it really sucks having to pick between two guys that were both stand-up guys and knowing one was going to go to the minors. So uh, I'm really rooting for Puck Stopper this year. I th think he's going to be easily the first one to, to get called up if there's ever a need. And uh, I, honestly, I can't say enough good things about the guy. Um, ben is also a solid defense or solid goalie, sorry. Malmo's getting a great player. Um, I just know that he missed some progressions and... Um, if I can recall correctly, and I may be speaking out of turn here, but I don't believe he responded to any of my messages um, when I was kind of scouting out the goalies. Uh, and I pulled them right off my list if I can't trust the guy's going to be around to, to answer questions or to, you know, to be on top of progressions and stuff. There's some concerns there. And it's, you know, the keystone spot. You need that that solid goalie. So I think Balmo is going to be backstopped well, and hopefully he sticks around and continues to grow. As for the other guys, I honestly can't say much about any of them but uh, I know I've seen Ian Shore in the chat a bunch and uh, I think all these guys will probably make themselves known over the course of the season so I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out yeah for sure you mentioned Ian Shore he was uh, a player in in goals before I think uh, season one maybe season two I think as well played for Vegas under a different name if I'm not mistaken um so definitely knows a little bit about how the league operates. And I see the chat asking about the missed progressions. Yeah, Puckstopper and Bishop did both miss two progressions last season. Uh, so that could have contributed to why those are the two that are being in the minors. Um, but uh, yeah, they're, you know, still the highest rated goaltenders in the in the minors. Uh, Puckstopper obviously played phenomenally in the playoffs. And uh, he's going to be looking to become the first player in our league history to win two championships uh, at pro or minors. I don't think anybody's done it at pro yet. Definitely not at the minor le level. So it'll be interesting to watch that unfold. All right. Now the other minors assignments. Uh, this is anyone who was not selected in the affiliation draft uh, and what teams they will be playing for uh, next season. So there were 12 of them. Uh, so Cooper Mears is going to the Tokyo Tigers. Reed Primrose to Saskatoon. Joseph Brady to Vancouver. Jason Legend Messi Jr. to Tokyo. Stig Magnus to Warsaw. Timothy Alexander to Saskatoon. Tom Adamo Jr. to Malmo. Alexander Petrov to Manitoba. Cam Jones to Iceland. Cameron Green to Atlantic. Max Jones to Warsaw. And Soren Kierkegaard to Iceland. Uh, 
did uh, maybe Newton, did you want to hop on here? I don't know if there are any names on this list um, that kind of jump out at you. I know most of these weren't eligible for the affiliation draft because of when they joined, but I don't know if you know any of them or if you maybe wanted to talk a little bit about the goaltenders uh, that we talked about a moment ago as well. Um, so, unfortunately, I don't know a lot of the names here. I I, I can kind of guess some of them have been in the, in the general chat that I've seen, their names here and there. Um Surprised that there's not a lot. Of, well, the, I'm surprised there's not a lot more uh, defense, but also I'm kind of not surprised that there's not a lot more defense, considering how the defense have been uh, very scattered upon this uh, this season. Um, as far as much as uh, since we were talking about the goalies earlier, um, Ben Bishop was one of the people that I like, It was between Ben Bishop and Lassinger for me. Um, but I think with Anybody who's trying to build up their stats and whatnot, the progressions are like very important. And I think uh, if people miss progressions, that's that's going to hurt them in the long run, whether they want to get drafted or not. And and I've had great talks with Lassinger, so that that was a uh, that that was where I had a pick, picked between the two. Um, any and I will say for like any goalies going forward, like make sure you guys get your progressions in because that's that's key between getting drafted and not drafted. But as far as the um the these other minors for the assignments, um I hope to see a lot of good come out of uh these players. Um especially those like jo- uh Joseph Brady uh going to Vancouver, uh Stig Magnus going to the uh Warlocks. So I'll be definitely keeping an eye on him for that position on the left mm-hmm. wing. But yeah, just make sure you guys get your progressions in. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, most of these players being new. I mean, I think four or five of these guys I had to add to the uh, to this slide, like, you know, two hours or an hour before the show. Because um, some of them are, are that new, but we got them in here. And, um, yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, how these guys progress. And, yeah, you mentioned the missed progressions. Uh, you know, we have seen players who miss progressions in the minors take the next step to the to the pros and and once they're in a pro locker room you know that activity level starts to ramp up a little bit but it's it's always a risk for teams drafting so it's not that we won't draft somebody who's missed progressions but uh, definitely get your progressions in it's a big uh a big boost to your draft stock and and shows that you're a little less risky uh if you don't miss those progressions uh one position i'm uh, surprised we didn't see any new ones uh for are actually is actually center uh, I was hoping because I know there's at least one, maybe two minor league teams who didn't get any centers in the affiliation draft, so it would have been nice for them to start with at least one. But, um, you know, uh, I'm a little surprised to see center uh, creation be a little bit down lately, considering that's usually one of the more popular positions. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, to see how it goes. Um, so that's all I had for this. Like I said, it was just a short show. Uh, Mikey, did you want to come on with any uh, kind of closing thoughts? Yeah, you know what, uh, just to go back on that misprogression things, um, it did definitely uh, tailor our draft plans. Uh, misprogressions were definitely something, I mean, crap happens, man. Like, you're going to miss some sometimes. It's not a big deal. Uh, you kind of move on. Um, but not being able to account for those or not taking the steps to make up for them uh, is a is an issue as well. So, and just speaking to everybody out there, uh, both rookies and vets alike, just to keep in mind that you guys have the options of using Twitch points to gain back some of those missed progressions. And the other issue is, uh, I know some guys have mentioned, you know, real life issues that come up and that happens. Um, it's super easy to message your head coach or your team owner or somebody else on the team that can at least put it forward for you. Okay. Give them a couple of weeks of, of your progression plan. And then we can just cut and paste your, uh, your chat into the progression page for you and, you know, account for those, those times that you know that you're going to be missing. Sometimes you don't know what's going to happen. It happens and you kind of have to deal with it. But uh, I know from personal experience that this league is pretty, there's a fair bit of grace in, in trying to help players out because it is a player's league and we'll do what we can to try and help you through, you know, tough times or, you know, times where you're going to be a little bit more absent, whether you know it or not, we can figure it out. Yeah, for sure. And I think that that's why um, before last season we saw uh, the league made a change. Um, it used to be if you miss one progression, your team could cut you and, and kind of move on. Uh, now we make it a minimum of two prog- two missed progressions uh, throughout the season uh, before the team has the option to cut. So um, gives players who, you know, have life come up a little bit more leeway. 
Um, and you know, two missed progressions, uh, I think is a very realistic and or a very reasonable uh, number uh, from both the team side and the player side. So, um, yeah, missed progressions happen, um, but if you know they're going to be you're going to be busy or something, definitely let someone know, like like Mikey said. Um, Newton, did you want to come on with uh, any final thoughts uh, before we close the show out? Um, I've, I've kind of already said everything I've wanted to say before, and I think if I say anything else, it's just kind of repeating everything that um, both Mikey and you have said about the whole progressions things. Um, I know I've mi- I know I've missed progressions before, and it like like Mikey said, it's so easy just to talk to the person that owns the team just be like hey listen i'm gonna be missing this can we have like a progression plan um i mean i've already had to do one this year and it's fine um i know real stuff happens and i'd rather people get stuff sorted out in real life so they can come back and enjoy what they're doing rather than losing an entire player that they try building just because real life stuff happens It, it happens talk to the people um but yeah other than that i got nothing else Awesome, yeah, and like Craig just mentioned in the chat, progression's open, uh, you know, for Monday, well, uh, Saturday or Sunday night, it opens, and it doesn't close till Friday night, so you've got, you know, five, six, uh, almost seven days, in some cases, uh, to progress, so um, it shouldn't, missed progression shouldn't be uh, too big of a thing, because it only takes a few minutes, but, you know, if, yeah, if people have life going on or, or whatever, so it's easy to... Uh, yeah, just talk to us. Let us know if you've got something going on. We'll try to try to hook it up um, for you guys. But uh, yeah, um, and otherwise, yeah, you can just ask your team for suggestions, and they can say what they would do, and then makes it a little easier on you as well. Um, I did see a question in the chat as well earlier. I wanted to talk about what happens to the newcomers. Uh, so any newcomers that aren't on this list will be assigned. Um, I don't know if there's any new ones since this show started, but. Um, Basically, as players are joined, as players join, they get assigned on weekends. Um, so no new players can join the minors during the season or during the week. Uh, they will be assigned to their minor league team on the weekend, so they'll be on the team to start uh, the following week. Um, but no minor league players will be assigned to pro league affiliation. Uh, after the affiliate draft is concluded. Um, so that's why all these players are just assigned to a minor league team, not a pro team. Um, if a team loses a player and calls up an affiliate, uh, they still are just, they're just one affiliate short. Really, the affiliates are just that first kind of pool to call up from. And then uh, once you run out of affiliates for a particular position group, like forward or defense, uh, then you can start calling up from the rest of the minors of unaffiliated players. Um, so I hope that answered the questions. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you to Mikey and Eric for coming on here. Uh, thanks to everybody who watched uh, the show, and good luck to all these players starting the minors. Uh, there were exactly 100 names assigned to their teams on this show, so congratulations to those 100, and good luck in the coming season. <laughs>